Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing a lovely intro for 2016, new for 16, the Tudor Heritage Black Bay Dark. The Black Bay Dark is 41 millimeters in PVD black stainless steel, and you can see on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, this watch was probably the starkest new offering from Tudor that year. It is monolithic, and I mean it is 2001 monolithic. Big, black, and imposing. The 41, nevertheless, is still a fairly wearable watch. I would recommend this watch for a wrist as small as 14 centimeter circumference. It's thick in two different ways. You can see that there is a strap that is underslung NATO style. It adds about one and a half millimeters of thickness, so the watch is 16.1 millimeters thick with the strap. Of course, if you fit a conventional strap, the watch is going to be just under 15 millimeters thick. Now, between the lugs, it's a modern watch. 22 millimeters is the spacing, so you're going to find that the watch is compatible with broad modern straps that complete the broad modern footing and planted stance on the wrist. Lug to lug, the watch is nicely constrained, 50.2 millimeters. It's kind of broad, but the fact that the lugs are sharply downturned means that it's an easier watch to wear than you might suspect on a wrist of small size and you can see that well on mine. The strap is a quasi-NATO, which is to say, in some ways, it is like a NATO. It features metal hardware, which like the case is stainless steel and PVD blackened. You can see the Tudor crest on the clevis style, sort of counterweighted buckle. It's an unconventional design, but a handsome one that looks highly technical and matches the aesthetic of the watch. But you can see that it's conventional pin buckle with apertures on the opposite side that you simply buckle into place to size the watch. It's not a conventional gooseneck bind NATO strap wrap. Of course, it does feature an underslung profile, but you'll also note how you do actually have to remove the spring bars to remove the strap because it goes over and underneath the spring bars, so it's very secure. A little bit different from a standard NATO, but you get the same aesthetic. The black case is satin finished, so though it is PV PVD coated, you still do see the basic metal finish underneath, which is satin and handsome, but simple. The case is large, blockish, and as you can see, vintage inspired, no crown guards. You have a screw down crown with a black stem tube, and you'll note outboard the 1968 and prior Tudor Rose logo, and on the dial, the 1968 and later Tudor Shield logo. The case has a little bit of a beveled profile on the edge of the lugs, and that's supposed to be an evocative reference to the era when Rolex and Tudor shared cases, which invariably for Submariner models back in the day included that hand-finished bevel. It was back when Tudor and Rolex shared cases right up until the end of the 80s. Now, the bezel is a unidirectional rotating dive bezel. It features a very sharp and shallow coining on the edge that actually makes it a pleasure to grip, and it's, it's more positive and, in my opinion, offers more tractive surfacing than the knurling you'll find on a Submariner or a Sea Dweller bezel. Turn it, listen to the click, It's a bit chunkier than the refined glide of a Rolex bezel, but then again, it does give the watch its own brand character, and I think that's a good thing. It's sharper and more audible, so those of you who like noisy bezels, this one's for you. Vintage-inspired red triangle above the luminescent pearl. You align that luminescent pearl, and by the way, aluminum bezel insert. You line it with the minute hand, and now you have a count-up 0 to 60 minute timer, which I find easier to read than a chronograph. And anyway, most chronograph minute subdials only go up to 30, so advantage dive bezel, plus you don't have the downstream maintenance costs of a chronograph mechanism. The dial is of a high grade. It is a tritone of black, white, and a little splash of red for the depth, another nod to the 1960s. And you can see that the dial is all applique, though this is the junior brand in the Rolex Tudor universe. Even this Black Bay model features applique indices. You can see outboard there's a white chapter ring for the minutes and seconds, and then we have late 60s to mid 70s Tudor Submariner snowflake style hands. The dial is bereft of date, but the watch does feature a stop seconds function, and the movement underneath the case back, though you can't see it, is the Tudor Manufacture Caliber MT5602 automatic winding, 70 hour power reserve, you have the stop seconds, you have a beat rate of 28,800 vibrations per hour, 200 meters water resistant thanks to the hardware of the case and the screw down crown, 
It beats away at 28,800 vibrations per hour on a free sprung balance mounted on a full balance bridge. Those two features for shock resistance. And there is a silicon hairspring for anti-magnetism. It is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer with smooth bi-directional winding. Its winding action is mostly intangible and silent. Now this is a handsome watch, a stark watch, a wearable watch. It's definitely a timepiece that means business. If you want subtlety, look elsewhere, including elsewhere within the Black Bay line. But if you want something that gives you maximum drama for your dollar, this is a great way to get into it with a manufacture movement and a bulletproof watch from a brand that will be around forever. You can see the Black Bay Dark and make it yours on the watch box. The Tudor Heritage Black Bay Dark. It's a full-featured sports watch by night. Nothing dark about this style.